Hi, my name is Jake Poole. I'm the horticulturist arbor specialist out at Northwest Trek. Um, we're out in Eatonville, Washington, over in the greater Seattle area. Uh, today we're uh, doing a stinging nettle pesto. Uh, it's a foraging uh, type of uh, recipe. It's actually one of the um, one of the more nutritious green uh, vegetables that we have and the, the, the access out in the woods. What's nice is this comes up early in the springtime. So over here, what you have to do is you have to boil the nettles and that takes the sting away. So even though, you, so you notice I'm handling with black gloves, but you put the nettles in and by blanching the nettles, you blanch them for one to three minutes. And you want to make sure that you get it all down inside the water so it's got contact with boiling water. You want to make sure you get all those stingers. You don't want to have any uh, surprises later on. And so we have our garlic. I like to just use two cloves, but if you like a stronger garlic flavor, you can go with three or four. That's kind of my personal preference. We've got the toasted walnuts here. Um, that's just a half a cup of toasted walnuts. And then we have our uh, freshly grated uh, Parmesan, and that is a quarter cup of that. Now, if you want, you can also do a vegan option of uh, doing tofu and yeast nutrient. And I like that. Um, you know, it's a nice flavor, too. If you choose to do that, then uh, you can remove the olive oil out of it also. Okay, just that's all you need. So you just drain it out and take it to your sink and drain it. On your pestos, you don't want to have um, a lot of liquid, just like if you're using basil. So you want to shake this out and drain it. You got a salad spinner that works great. Um, I like to just use a, a towel and wring it out. And you just want to get all that water out of it. Now. That was six cups of nettles, and you can see here, there is not much left. It's almost down to a cup, a little bit, two cups maybe. Still hot and steaming, but see, it's nice vivid green. Now this is the test. Now, you trust me, you eat it, no sting. So it's all gone. Now it's hard to get your mind around that. Sometimes you'll th you feel the prickles, and you think that you're getting stung, but it's fine. It's dissolved. It's good. You can also dry them and do the same thing. So once you have it, Go ahead and slice it up. I just kind of rough chop it. It doesn't. I just like to break up some of the fiber. Like I said, this time of year it's getting a little coarse. The stems. So you want to make sure it's all nice and divided up. Now we'll take half of our uh, stinging nettle. Mix it in with the blender. Make sure that that's all mixed together. Take about half of your olive oil. So your olive oil. We're going to use a three quarters cup of olive oil. Blend it a couple times, whirl and this. It's uh, when there's not that much in there, sometimes you have to use the push it down. So we can take the rest of our nettles. I love that, that bright, vivid color. It looks delicious. So we'll put the rest of our olive oil in there. I just do salt to taste. I like using uh, sea salt, it's always nice. I just do a little pinch. It's usually enough. But just put whatever, whatever your liking is. Okay, let's try that again, a little bit more, more of a whirl. Now you can see there's enough in here now that it's actually mixing up. Let's go see how that's doing. Starting to get that nice vivid color mixed in. So sometimes I'll scrape it down, get the stuff off the sides. It's starting to get that nice pesto. You know, like you would see in basil pesto, it's got that nice look and texture, so it's not too unusual looking. Mix it, put it on a nice loaf of artisan uh, bread. Yeah. 
And then if you want to highlight the flavor also, you can put a little tomato on there also. For more information on stinging nettles and the recipe, check it out on diginseattle.com.